am and therefore I command, yet I am not made bigger by that I command or who I command. I live my purpose through my highest self. Therein lies my success and happiness and yours. Welcome, Nidhi. Thank you for having me, Garva. That's uh, really sweet of you and a lovely summary. Thanks so much. So before we start with all the queries that we've had, especially I have, uh, please tell us something about conscious. Well, uh, conscious is at its core um, a way in which we want to evolve, evolve humanity, um, energize the planet. So the core of this is looking to we can take it the next thing we've taken technology to the next level automation factoring it's the same humanity as well and human evolution and um, that, that's that's the eco-friendly store um somewhere where you can live well and then we want to move to uh, the academy which is how to think uh, you know even better for yourselves and dreams and goals and achieve them and then eventually we want to have uh, some uh, some media and uh, a, a good conscious narrative around the way people inspire themselves and find ways to live their purpose so yeah okay. this is going to be an interactive session so we would request you to drop all your questions in the chat section and we will take them at one point of time so Nidhi, let's go back to your big, big names. You know, when did your entrepreneurship journey start? You were a working professional with good industry, equity, and accolades. What made you turn into entrepreneurship? I think I had a great run in the company that I went in. Uh, you know, big post. I think I owe them a lot in terms of where I learned my leadership lessons and um, the ethics of the company and everything was something to aspire and learn from. Um, at the same time, I think there was a large part of me that wanted something else and beyond a point, it was very difficult to uh, escape from, from that voice of, of um, purpose of what I wanted to do beyond a point. And it made sense at that point to can kind of start into my own journey. So, you know, you, your accomplishments were with a tech firm, right? So what made you take a different route? Why not stick to something you were good at doing? You were, you know, yeah, that's a lovely winning question. rewards for. Um, you know, it's, I do get that a lot. Um, and I think one of the reasons that this question is so important is that people believe that uh, they are... Uh, a mix of certain competencies that they have done in the past, right? Without realizing that there is so much out there that they can do. It's just that they haven't experimented or explored enough. And to um, fall back on your past to create your future, in my opinion, is not a very great strategy. You can leverage on it. You can build on it, which is what we are doing. Technology is still at the core of what conscious is. At the same time, it has to be big. Life is bigger than a set of competencies, right? And uh, exploring that and uh, deriving your purpose from it is I, is, I think, more important than just leveraging your uh, previous competencies, which is why, um, you know, I decided to do something which is based on technology, but not completely off it. And would you say that you're really proud of it? Absolutely. I mean, yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. So every entrepreneurship journey every every entrepreneurship success rather comes with its own set of challenges yeah i think the entire type family would want to know what were your challenges that you faced um i think the biggest challenge that anyone really has uh, is their own mindset uh, is are the fears and insecurities behind taking the next step um i think more than anything else the closest challenge in the most port uh, potent, prominent challenge is how do you uh, handle your own self? Right? How do you handle your own mind that tells you what's possible, what's not possible to, for you on a daily basis? That's your biggest challenge um, as a good entrepreneur, businessman, CEO, right? Uh, any good position you're in where you have large responsibility. Uh, outside of that, of course, are uh, the basic challenges of, of picking up skills and learning fast. I think the second most uh, pertinent challenge, I think, is figuring out a way uh, of managing all the responsibilities that you have uh, and that you want to be good by at the same time deliver on your own personal personal responsibilities as well as responsibilities of the world and figuring out how to balance those two together i think that's an all, uh, always at the top of my of my mind there okay so uh, entrepreneurship 
entrepreneurship has different rules. I mean, every entrepreneur has a different set of rules that they go by, they swear by, you know, whenever they have to make tough decisions. What is Nidhi Rena's rule of thumb when it comes to entrepreneurship? Ah, rule of the thumb. I think um, I can come back to my own principles. I think what are the principles that I live with? Um, you know, how can I reduce the noise noise around me, noise of expectations, noise of dreams, desires, and come back to uh, the little voice of truth, which is to say, what is it that you want to do? And I think that, right? And that's the that's the rule of the thumb always, right? Um, is it, am I doing this because I'm expecting something or somebody expects something or because I succeeded in it? Or am I doing this because I really want it? So getting closer and closer to what you really want and listening to yourself, I think is number one thing for me. Uh, the other thing that I always check back on is, uh, uh, you know, what do I want to do? Like, what is the impact I want to do? And then who do I want to be? I think many companies do what do I want to do very well. They have a five-year-old role map for it. Uh, but who do I want to be as a, as a person and as an organization while wanting to achieve those goals is something that I find uh, lacking sometimes in the larger goals that people or organizations have. And I think that's uh, that to me is also um, a rule of the thumb in that sense. So am I doing it the right way? Um, is it making me a better person doing what I'm doing? Is it making others a better person um, being with me? That's, um, that's the general principle. Roughly. So have you ever taken decision basis this principle? Have you ever faced a, an opportunity or a moment where you had to like, think through and then go back to your principles oh, and then oh, yeah, yeah, of course. a lot of times I think it's very easy to get swayed by uh, what do I want to do because it has a very natural materialistic lure and who, who am I becoming kind of always takes a back, back seat because you're in the middle of trying to get something done um, and therefore sometimes you do falter on who am I becoming like am I being too hard am I asking for too much is it the right way did I do the right thing um, you know, but just having that general awareness, being conscious of the fact that that's also a very important aspect for you brings you back um, to the center. And, uh, and the same goes the other way, right? Who do I, who am I becoming um, should not alter my business. So business needs something that's great, but if it's not part of my ethos, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And having that uh, good bit of balance with yourselves, like when you're working is important, but uh, nine times out of 10, you know, there will be, you'll be good. One out of 10, you might falter a little bit and be okay with that. So, you know, coming up with the same thing, when it comes to one's principle and partnerships in the business, there's always a relationship and there is always a struggle. So what is your key sense to maintaining or ensuring key partnerships when it comes to entrepreneurship? Um, I think stop thinking of them as outside of your family. Uh, is, is number one. I think you will not do harm to somebody who you think is your family and therefore having ownership of the entire ecosystem and not just your business, uh, in my opinion, is, is number one, in which case the struggles will be very less. And the only struggle you will have is explaining to the other person how much you really do care about them and their business. And what you're suggesting is a win-win situation. Um, then therefore managing the trust uh, which is placed in you and you place in them over a period of time, letting go of some things and managing the others. If you think of them as a separate entity, yes, uh, there are chances you uh, might do something you would not do ordinarily with a friend or a family. Okay. Uh, we have a comment here in the chat that there are network issues at the end of Aditi Agarwal. I, I hope you are here with us, Aditi. I hope it is sorted. Uh, coming back, uh, uh, I, I am an entrepreneur as well. And whenever, you know, you, you have a set of rules, uh, you know, in front of you, be it human resources, be it managing other resources, finances, etc. cetera, there are always a set of negotiables and non-negotiables. I am very excited to know what is, what, I, what is your set of a complete non-negotiable when it comes to your business? Um, I think something that I hold myself to is what I can expect others to do. And um, I always expect authenticity out of myself, uh, even if I'm wrong. And uh, I expect integrity out of myself. So if I've said something to the T, I'll follow it. I expect uh, trust from the others. So I genuinely want to, my first footing would be on trust. 
um, those to me are non-negotiable. I, I don't think that uh, I'll, I, I'm, and I'm learned from some of the best uh, people that I idealize and they'd rather give up business than give up people. And uh, to me, that's paramount, right? First is, can I, can I have a good relationship with the people that I'm in, right? Uh, assuming that they follow the same ethos and ethics and principles. Yes, can I can I do that? That's number one to me. Uh, lately, I think uh, my eyes have been open to a lot more things that I now hold myself responsible for, and I'm working to do those, uh, make those happen. Is ensuring that as a business model, right? It took us six eight months to fly off the ground, and I think a large part part of that was I double checked every business ethics practices before I integrated that into my system, including things like simple terms and uh, and agreements that you share with your partner. Nothing was as is, right? I want to make sure that number one, the people are paramount. Then the purpose of what we are doing is is there, and then the third is the planet, right? Which is always, in my opinion, been a little bit of a miss uh, when we are doing corporate. Uh, but uh, people, planet, and purpose. These things, these three things, have to come out strongly in my business statement. How I move ahead and then of course profits should be enough good enough uh, so I, I'm sure like many of entrepreneurs here anybody who, uh, we play a special role into multitasking we have our ha hand in hand at every aspect of the business so are you doing that too in what areas do you multitask? Oh, yeah, yeah. there's uh, somebody was joking that, you know, we're turning in, into an octopus and I just hope, you know, all these legs that we have to any things that we're doing just don't fall flat on the ground. I think that's always a little bit of a risk. But uh, the way I see it, once you have a small baby, you as a parent, you would know. And I think it's great when you're talking to women because they understand this analogy much better. Uh, once you have a small child, you have you can't get a nanny from day one. I think for a year, a year and a half, you have to uh, manage every aspect of the baby. And a year and a half down the line, you can let go. And um, in my opinion, that's that's the right way to build up um, uh, something. Is to a good idea is when you take I out of the idea after a year down the line and let other people embrace it, let other people get onto it, but just get it to a working, walking condition and um, I think you're good to go. And what about the art of delegating work? Uh -huh. I, mean, I, I seriously lack it. I mean, I am still at a stage where I still would want to get my hands everywhere, do everything myself to my own satisfaction. So if I have to learn it from you, how, what is the art of delegation for you? Um, I think, um, Delegation implies sometimes um, losing on the ownership of that job. So I, I would I would rather recommend have a um, you know you have the luxury you are not like a four lakh company you have the luxury to have a small family work on your idea and in a family there's no such thing as delegation right if I didn't take out the garbage one day my husband will and if he didn't my son will right so there's no there's no delegation there's a job that needs to get done everybody understands that everybody's trying their best and that's what you want to introduce into a company because right? you don't have the luxury of processes and and ownership and monitoring one person will do the task and two people will monitor and the fourth person will review it um, you need to work differently you cannot follow that template in my opinion uh, you work in such a manner that you spend a lot of time helping them bond with you as a family their their pain is your pain your pain is their pain right and once that happens i think your business pain will be shared delegation will automatically happen people will take ownership culture will become stronger uh, but to, uh, that said, I think to expect that they will do it the, exactly the way you want it might not happen. Uh, I think it's fair to let them do it their way and whatever is missing a little bit, you manage it in the end, you know? Okay, I, I would implement that, definitely. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so another, another of the question uh, that I find uh, a lot of entrepreneurs discussing it, and I am one of them because uh, uh, it is a tough thing to do is as a leader, how do you spot, develop, keep, grow and support talent at work? Um, I think in my entrepreneurial journey, I uh, have fewer examples um, because we've just kind of moved up the ground and we're a very small core team. Um, 
but based on the past 20 years as well in the mix of those i would say that um i've learned from some of the best uh, especially when they pick me i know that they're doing a good job uh, but uh, also because uh, when you have a sense of understanding of of who you want to become right uh, your your perspective changes when you are at the bottom of the mountain the kind of people you will pick are people who can do the bottom of the mountain well when you are at the middle of the mountain you start picking up people who can get to the middle of the mountain when you are at the top of the mountain you are looking at people who will do all the way from the bottom to the top and that's called really picking up a, up a talent because you know this person will not just last this position but will last the entire journey to the top and meet me there and i think that comes from a significant amount of working on your own self uh, when you when you get to a point where discussions are not about your ego uh, you know things are not about uh, how you want it versus how somebody else wants it i think you you gain the higher ground your opportunity to uh, to spot attract retain gets better but what gets even better is irrespective of whoever the talent is the ability to groom them into something that they'll be proud and you will be proud of gets even better yeah okay yeah so that's right because when it comes to entrepreneurship it's always about finding the right talent for a, for a very small business owner like me it's about finding the right talent and then ensuring that it stays with you and uh, ensuring that they Uh, I was watching a video some time back where they said that this is not the age where people earn to sustain. This is the age where people earn to grow, and they stay where they see the growth is. Right. So as an entrepreneur, now your duty is double folded. You have to look at your growth and the growth of the people that work with you, like you said, your family. I think if you think of it as your growth and their growth, it's going to be a task. um but if you if you integrate the into the culture of the company where everybody is learning it's not a it's not just you are not learning that they you they are learning no i'm i'm still attending courses on the side whether it is for self development or any other thing that i can learn and i'm expecting therefore that from example from leading by example they are also going to do that and when i talk about it and the enthusiasm with which i share it they want to join it as well and that's how you're going to get them to grow um i think uh, garma um for a short for a smaller company finding talent is going to be very very tough and it is you can't expect to pay them what some of the other companies are paying them and if you found that talent I'm pretty sure the other corporates will find them too what you can do however is uh, have such an amazing purpose uh, you know it's not like you are leading them you're all going to the same goal right and um, you you're just facilitating that making sure that journey of growth is easy for them as well and if you see it that way and they see that you're also learning you're there for them they're there for you it's much easier than trying to create a hierarchy in which then you have to work to maintain that hierarchy that's going to be tough yep i was going through your uh, linkedin profile and i found a long list of awards so first of all uh, tell us something about it how does it feel achieve not not about the awards but awards are a recognition factor that you are on the right track it is kind of a pat on the back that you know whatever you are doing is right how does it feel achieving uh, i have two questions in this uh, you know direction so i'll ask the first one how does it feel knowing you are on the right track when you get appreciated um i think uh, you're right awards and accolades are a very great way to know where the world is at and where you are at so it's a it's a good benchmark that are you somewhere with them are they doing better than you and um can you do something that that is different that's better than everywhere else and uh, having worked to get there and uh, be in a position to give it off to them i think that's what to me an award means is okay here look i got this i did this better um please go forward and do it let me know how i can help to me that's what that is right getting up to the top and saying i'm here to help and um and here is a trusted source saying that i did well and i i am in a position to help you um i think that's that's how you should look at an award uh, in my opinion just as a validation to say okay if there, if i know a little bit better can i help you in any which way to make that happen 
Um, uh, that said, I think, does it make you feel good? Mm, uh, first one or two, yes. After that, it was just um, uh, more about making sure that my peers, my colleagues, everybody understood that this is a good thing and they decide to uh, pounce on the opportunity and make it work for themselves. But then it wasn't about about me or my validation or the or the concept validation. It was just about adoption. Um, you know, we have, we've said enough, we've shouted to the rooftop that people development is important. This is how you can get productivity out of them. This is how cultures can be designed. And now that everybody's saying we're good, can you all please adopt as quickly as you can? Because people are suffering, businesses are suffering when they need not. Okay, so my next question is, uh, how do you strive for the next one? You know, after winning so many, with so many laurels and decolades in your kitty, how do you strive for that next milestone? Um, I think knowing that there's a lot of work to do, I think it's good that somebody I've, I've passed class fifth with a um, lot of awards and recognitions and, and got my trophy and all that. But knowing that I still have a PhD to do and uh, there's still people out there that we could help, that we could be part of, who, whose life could be, could be better from us doing what we are doing, that um, there's still injustice, there's still uh, the planet that needs to take care of, there is still people who are wondering what their true purpose is, there's people who whose uh, careers are not making sense, don't know if they're in the right careers. There's so much to uh, to do. Like, um, you, there's, no, there's no room, uh, maybe after a couple of hours, to kind of sit on that trophy beyond a point. Okay, now uh, I, I have a question from some of our women entrepreneurs. And uh, the very first one is, as a woman, what all challenges did you face in the corporate world? I think honestly, as a woman, I didn't put the glasses on. So even if I face challenges, I'm not sure whether I face them because I was a woman or because I was just um, really good at my job or not so good at my job, one of those things. I never looked at them that way, so I probably wouldn't be able to classify them. But um, uh, I would say that when when um, when my child was born and when um, you know my I was in the mid level management considering whether I did the right decisions in terms of what I did I think it was really challenging because uh, we as women we have uh, uh, we're sensitive about some things and uh, we feel probably a little bit more guilty about some things than compared to others we um, we empathize a lot our communications are you know. Uh, different from uh, others. So I think I would say that I've used them to my strengths uh, rather than cribbing that they were not um, matching the work field. They said, okay, fair enough. If, if I'm a fish, it's my job to find water, right? It's right. not the monkey's job to get me on the tree. So I figured out what I was and what worked for me. And I used that to my advantage wherever I could and where it wasn't, it was somebody else's advantage is fair. So be it. Yeah, I mean, I, I really think that, you know, as a women entrepreneur, you have that kind of extra pressure onto yourself. The world is not, the world might not be setting it for you, but you have it for yourself and the guilt as well. Long story. That's a long chapter. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, the, the, if, if you keep, uh, it's, I think it's fair to say that uh, being a woman has its own challenges. Uh, and I and there's a nice infographic somebody shared in WhatsApp the other day that said, you know, a man probably has the whole road uh, lap free and the woman has to go through the washing dishes and the cleaning. Yes, uh, I, I think uh, Mahindra, Anand Mahindra shared that on Twitter as well. Yes, that, that's right. I think that's true. But um, uh, I think that has its charm. I have always found that I've become a better multitasker, better at empathizing with my children, better at uh, understanding different customer perspectives in, in my own house and figuring out how to make it work for them. And I don't, I think that that's an advantage. It might be sold off as a strength, but anybody can sell you whatever they want. It's up to you whether you want to buy it. Because once you buy it, it's in your house, right? And if it's in your house, it'll mess around with it. It might be a perspective and there might be some truth to it, but uh, I wouldn't suggest buying it beyond a point. Right. So, uh what advice would you have, you know, for all those uh, young entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs, or anybody who's just starting out, you know, based on what you have experienced, because you've, you've spent a, you know, commendable time as a working professional, you know, in one of the Asia's largest uh, organizations. So what advice do you have for them when it comes to entrepreneurship? I think go for it. 
uh, you don't have to start with the whole world in one go, but whatever it is that you can do, do. And uh, if you can solve something a little better, if you can make things. And and to be honest, I'm so super impressed with where I am at this point and the number of entrepreneurs that I'm speaking to when I'm building up the conscious store. A lot of them are women and they are doing well in their businesses. And on the side, they started by experimenting with a small soap that the child wasn't uh, finding a good one or or some new uh, you know type of uh, cotton that they have figured out with which they're making clothes. I, uh, I think that it's not fair to say there is enough examples and I'm hopefully with with, with conscious we can bring those out uh, more. There is nothing uh, in my opinion that a woman cannot do. So if anything is stopping you, it's you. You, you fair enough, you, you have a little bit more stuff to do, but you know in, in your heart that it's, it's your job to get up and make things work. And if you get help, fair enough. If you don't, look out. Uh, I feel that whether it is it, help, whether it is divine or human is always available, but the first few steps you have to take. I have a very interesting question from Anupam, and it is any experiments that you did in the corporate world, which has lessons for small and medium business owners for their companies? Any experiments? Okay, mm, many actually. Uh, I think um, I was all never content with what I had. And if I had any opportunity to do something, I would find another way to do it. Uh, I would recommend uh, in uh, smaller companies that please uh, start thinking about people first. Uh, if your people, especially smaller companies, uh, if your people are satisfied, they're productive, they're healthy, they're happy, they understand the business, they understand why you built the business, they understand the pain of the customer, and everything is transparent to them, right? um they have they will engage more it's not our parents generation and to some extent my generation when we joined our job it, nobody had to tell us it was just expected that i expect you know supposed to be there nine ten hours and work whatever my boss says uh, i think now newer generations and people that i'm speaking to now they this is not enough for them so uh, put them first uh, their their children they need to learn get the uh, the early shepherds the early sheep out there let them figure out things and let the bigger ones stay at the back and and manage and monitor them as opposed to be the other way around where you lead it to lead and the children had to follow you i i think that little bit of uh, flip is really needed in in the new new msme sectors where you're, you're reaching out to younger generation talent is number one uh, second thing is put purpose behind everything. I think purpose-driven businesses are the way to go. They are the most sustainable businesses. They attract the most talent. You attract the right talent and people are in it because they feel like they, their, their life is meaning, their work is touching the things they want to touch. So that I would do. Um, third thing is as quickly as possible get to being sustainable. My child is, for example, learning about compost uh, when already right? so he's already asking me questions about why we are not doing this and that and i think in 10 years they'll be ready knocking in your door for internship so as quickly as possible figure out how you're sustainable i think uh, those few things uh, basics right ethics uh, uh, sanskar of your company right the culture what do you stand for and can you really if you as a business or a management can come 10 on 10 on the goals and the aspirations and the principles of the company, you have nothing to fear about. But if you don't, then and you as a management or a board are not um, at par with those principles, think the current generation probably won't uh, listen anymore. So. so coming from that, when you say that, you know, younger, uh, small or younger companies, they, they have, a, they have a, a lot more responsibility than anybody, you know, previous to them. One question is, what I, as an entrepreneur, can learn from my competitor? According to you, have you ever done it? How has your, you know, experience been in that segment? I love competitors. I think I enjoy the idea um, when I have a competitor in the place. It, it, of course, it gets my best out because now I have a benchmark. And it helps me as a company, right? Uh, if I, there's no competitor means why am I even doing that? Like, good, nobody has thought about it. But then again, why hasn't somebody thought about it? Is there a loophole that I'm not aware of? So for sure, number one, they set a good benchmark that there is business to be made there. Uh, two, they've already taken some risks that you not need not take anymore. So in that sense, they've done you a favor. Now you know you can read up and you can understand what they are doing, what is working for them, and what can you do and not do in that space. 
and the third is uh, uh, honestly competitors are your best friends you there's no better, bigger friend than your competitors because ultimately what do you want to do you want to make life better for your customer and if they are also doing it how many people will you reach in 7 billion uh, you can't expect that you will have all 7 billion in your city and if they are reaching out and they're making life better for other people well that's a good thing right uh, from an outcome point of view so uh, uh, compete on uh, on uh, on technology on uh, approach blah blah but be careful and respectful to the competitors that at the end of the day they're helping you rather than anything else yeah another question that we have gotten is uh, what role has your support system played in your journey if they have what have you done to build it up um i think to be very honest as a woman if you ask me i think there's there is definitely one in one tech trick in there for women um when i started uh, and i got married etc i i was very authentic it wasn't i was not fake if i didn't want to do something i would say it i didn't want to do it or this doesn't work for me i think the first few years were tough uh, figuring out the 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 right space for everybody involved uh, in the long run that has helped me significantly because there's a lot of trust in what i say and what i do and how i do it and the amount of care i take to do it so uh, for sure if we're talking about in new relationships uh, entering into them stay authentic is is my uh, is is of course politely uh, but straight to to you to to yourselves is one second is where possible just let go if somebody is not doing something to your uh, to your liking it's okay you know you're not you're not the king of the queen of the world it's fine and then um, some places where your principles are getting addressed you can stand up and say it's not fair um, is the second thing Uh, third thing in terms of uh, making a support system is keep in touch with them please don't rely on whatsapp and uh, messages and mails and uh, facebook to uh, to make relationships with your support system a uh, woman uh, more than anybody else i think that's the differentiator there also is they need um, they need their, the women and the men in their life they need them it's it's not a want it's a need we we are social we're more social than men in some ways and we want uh, we want to take care of people we want to be taken care of so uh, in your case please don't rely on the technology too much pick up the call call them have those conversations with your friends early friends and so on keep them running i think covid was a good point of time for everyone to you know kind of connect with each other virtually but still yeah totally um, i in that sense i'm really grateful to covid <laughs> So uh, another question that you've gotten is uh, do you have a mentor and if yes how has it changed you Oh uh, yes i mean uh, if you don't have a mentor grab one like um, even if the person if you're going to kashmir and somebody is taking you to delhi please get on it they they understand it better they have their faster for me i have uh, uh, distributed my life into certain buckets and for each bucket i have a person that i uh, look up to for mentorship and uh, the buckets where i don't haven't found my mentor because i just won't take anyone uh, in that sense uh, but where i haven't found a mentor i have found that i've i've struggled or it's been a little slow ride for me so um, mentors are uh, uh, buckets means uh, financials one bucket uh, spiritual life is another bucket um, career wise another bucket now entrepreneurship is a bucket uh taking care of my child is another bucket so these are my buckets and in each each of these i have a person that i can look up to and i know exactly what to look up to for them and there are things that they don't do well so i don't follow that but 90% of the time they do things well and um i keep them in uh, keep them in my mind when i'm making those decisions you said if you don't have a mentor find one are you open absolutely i'm already mentoring as many as i can and there's not a single person on linkedin who's reached out with something that i haven't spent time responding and then double checking we will put it across in our groups <laughs> we are up for trouble huh <laughs> okay um uh, next question that i have come is an entrepreneur face challenges that drains their energy i second that what do you do to maintain that positive mindset I think uh, I love the word energy. I use that a lot. I think uh, um, knowing how to gauge 
uh, what you are doing and how you're feeling is an important aspect of being an entrepreneur. You cannot go into a meeting uh, from something that has happened in the past and drag it into the meeting and throw it on others. You, as an entrepreneur, as a management manager, you have a different type of responsibility. It's not that you five years you were doing technical lead, now you're team lead, so you're in this five and a year, one month, it's the same, no. You pick up a position, you pick up a huge amount of responsibility and the way you conduct yourself should change with that. Um, that set is where you look at energy as a, as a lifesaver, so to say. If I'm feeling low on energy, I know what to do. Is it coming from physical body? Have I had my food? Have I, did I get enough sleep? Uh, I check that. And uh, if it is coming from something somebody said and it's still lingering in my, in my mind, so it's my mind energy I need to solve. If it's a relationship that didn't go well or somebody said something that I wasn't expecting or somebody leaving the company also sometimes, uh, you know, even though you wish them well and you love them, it still feels uh, like a part of you is, is, is going away. So there's a lot of emotional energy in, in, in there. And then there's a spiritual or the inner part of it, which is why am I doing this? And am I hitting the right targets? Did I do what I was intended to do with my day? Um, I think for me, meditation works big time. And so does just being aware of what have I done wrong today where my energy is, is leaking and then finding a way to plug it. Uh, apart from meditation, what are some things that you do to really, you know, call it a day, you know, let the stress go off? Um, so there's a lot of me time that I've built in in the day. So I will definitely have a little bit of me time. Then if it's 15 minutes come me time, I will take a, I'll take my own cold coffee break or if I'm feeling like something else, I'll do that. Then there are days where I am okay to be in low energy because it's just needed. And I have to get through the grind and I then catch up on it later. But uh, I, I manage that uh, well. I read books when I have to. I indulge in a little bit of TV with my child, uh, family time, just cuddling him and watching the same thing together and uh, watching him shriek out with uh, happiness of silly things. Uh, those are my ways. I think people have to figure out, just watch yourselves and how, how are you feeling and what changed that and manage that into you, build it into your day. It's, it's your job. You know, you mentioned books, somebody's message that uh, what are the few books that one can read for entrepreneurship? The books that you recommend. And then I will tell them that you're authoring books too. <laughs> well, yes. Um, I think somebody recommended The J-Curve. So I'm on my way to reading it. I'm also parallelly reading uh, This is Marketing by Seth Gordon. And um, I think since I was six years old, I've been reading books a lot. And um, so... I've kind of stopped reading so much, so maybe I'm not the right example. Um, I think I enjoy reading, to be honest. I don't enjoy reading how somebody else has done their bit. I enjoy reading how I can be better of me. So a lot of the books that I read are self-improvement books, um, um, like habits and uh, what are the triggers and loops of human behavior. Those interest me more than uh, business ethics because I feel that I'll find my way around them. In the little bit of time I have, I'd rather work on myself um, than work on, on a marketing or a tool. That I'm just, I'm willing to say, somebody tells me I can do this better than you, I'll say go for it. Um, I have time to then work on myself. I wanted to tell everybody that Nadi is authoring two books, The New Age CEO and The Quantum You. Please tell us something about it. Yeah, it's, um, they are in process and I think they'll take some time to get there. Um, the new age CEO is really about uh, what are the new, what is the new mantle of CEO that I want to look up to, and I feel like I share people. There are a few people that I uh, absolutely look up to, and I want, and I feel that there should be more of those. Uh, after having worked with uh, so many uh, Fortune 100 companies across the world, consulting with them as part of my previous company, uh, I realized and observed what worked for some good companies and good managers, and what didn't work for those um, that I'm working with. And from there, I, I think, um, and largely also from uh, my gurus and everybody else, what is that um, thing that will effect, eventually make you a good CEO? And by CEO, I don't mean chief executive officer, I mean chief energy officer. A CEO needs to be the person who pumps energy into his team. Uh, he doesn't, he or she doesn't need to do anything else. And to be able to pump energy into something, you need to know how they work, what their systems are, how do people work, how do teams work, how do processes work, and, find a way to bring that together so that's the new age ceo and um, the quantum you is really just saying that there is a part of you uh, which is way bigger than your little identity 
and uh, the sooner you're able to leave that little identity and little bit of understanding of what you can do cannot do me me and mine me and mine and move to a space where you are saying okay i am the planet i am the cosmos i am the i am uh, you know what i'm supposed to do here on the planet and and then build uh, remove layer by layer that understanding and get to a point where that that higher identity is driving your day as to opposed to the smaller identity so so did you always like wanted to author a book or you know <laughs> uh, well um, i still don't think of myself as an author yet i think i'm just sharing i'm more sharing and caring than anything else and um, uh, that way i guess it's been part of me i've always wanted to whatever little bit i've had even if i was a kid i always wanted to share that so i think that's what the books are oh someone has said any fun anecdotes you can share please so i was uh, right penning down a, a investor ppt for someone and they had they asked what what uh, what do you find funny and i was thinking that you know uh, what is funny to me is that you've mastered going to the moon you've mastered becoming a, a a robot who can empathize like you but uh, and that's like 40000 miles and miles away and you haven't we haven't looked within and figured out how to master ourselves i find that exceedingly funny if i uh, it it gives me um, it gives me goosebumps every every time i think about it that we can be so um, myopic in in some things and so broad minded in others to everyone we are taking questions now you can please type them in the chat box nidhi uh, as somebody who is not into the sustainability space yet what are some of the things that one could do to you know contribute towards that aspect of life towards sustainability towards bringing their organization organization into sustainability Uh, i think like i said when i was in the corporate thinking about the planet wasn't one of my bigger um uh, fortes but what i've realized is uh, uh, i don't need to think of picking it up as sustainability right any time you think of yourself as wanting to pick up a task you have so much on your head you figure out like uh, another burden but i would leave this with you i would suggest that you think of yourselves in the planet as one the planet is also a living breathing organism and now you think that you are on, Uh, you are co-inhabiting with a living, breathing organism, and think whatever you are doing, does it work? Uh, if you have compassion for animals, you have compassion for people that you love. You know, you will automatically figure out what is the right thing to do by, you know, by this beautiful other thing that you are living with. You don't have to think anymore. You will figure it out. Is it is it is it dry recyclable bottles for you? Is it um, clothing? Is it natural food? Uh, is it helping the farmer? You know, it's up to you. so much work you know this reminds me i was reading it one day that uh, somebody pointed out to uh, anand mahindra he's very active on twitter right so he posted a picture of the meeting and the uh, bottle water bottles were plastic and somebody mentioned that sir you talk of sustainability in the e vehicle section but you're using plastic water bottles so what did he do he said okay he admitted to it and the next picture that he shared were the steel bottles for you know what what else so that is one step that i took um i got a very very interesting question not sure <laughs> uh what role have men played in your success a big big role there is no there is uh, i cannot be more grateful for having them as our partners on the planet because um the kind of strength they bring the perspectives they bring and the a uh, focused understanding that right? i find myself worrying a lot about a lot of different things and then getting so paralyzed by it sometimes not being able to take the next step and bringing that clarity to say it'll all happen and you know just take that first step uh, is something that you know men in my life do a lot and uh, also helping build up the company quite some of them are men right now um i don't think that i would could have found good equal perspectives um, at, that we need to complement ourselves outside of men so a big part is what if if that's the right answer what is your take on balance uh, you know maintaining you know professional life personal life i i well, there is no such yeah i mean often i was about to say that i talk to people i i i have like like a, there is nothing called balance <laughs> and there are some people who give me tips on it but i want to know nidhi rena's take on it Uh, um 
I'm still learning. Let me say, start by that. Uh, that said, I think um, you have to integrate life, which is which is what I keep speaking about in other forums also. If you think about having a balance, you will get it. So just having that an understanding that a balance is needed is enough. You will know when to tip the scale, which side. We're all intelligent people that way. That said, if sometimes things don't work out that way, it's fine. You start by integrating it, right? Keep out, take out a little me time, take out a little family time. Even if it's a gentle, um, you know, hug to the child before they go to school or start sitting for this homework, that's enough. Um, you know uh, that energy speaks more than actions do sometimes, and your intentions and everything is good. It will, it will, it will work fine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to kind of trust other sources when you're doing good things to come up and help. Okay. Uh, one question that I have, uh, you know, specifically jotted for you is: if you could tra time travel back to day one of your startup and have fifteen minutes with your former self to communicate any lessons you have acquired with the intention of saving yourself mistakes, what would you tell yourself? I think I would say just do whatever you're doing; you'll be fine. <laughs> I think. Um... Uh, I don't regret a single challenge that I had. I don't regret a single step that I've taken. I think uh, they've all led to this point. And if they've all led to this point where I'm talking to lovely Garima, Anjum, Jatinder, uh, Anupam, everybody trying to figure that out must have done something good. Right? So I wouldn't change that. Um, I'm pretty happy uh, that they happen. All I would, I would, uh, if anything, say to that person is don't doubt yourself. Only the best will happen and um, move forward. Thank you very much. Um, I have my kitty of questions full. Uh, I would still uh, be taking other questions. If anyone has any question, please. I have a question. I'm not sure. One person who can make you laugh anytime and how? Uh, my, my kid. My kid will do that anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and good people, honestly, good people. I, I think I see good people and I, I feel warm inside and they'll say even the silliest thing and I laugh. So it's easy to make me laugh. Anybody has anything else? We're good. I think I asked you a lot of questions today. Mm -hmm. I've covered for all of them. <laughs> I'm happy. I like it when people take out maximum juice out of me. How do you view the world? How do I view the world? Are you pre-COVID, post-COVID? <laughs> <laughs> I think I love the post-COVID part. I would just, I, I think the only thing I've changed about that is I wish everybody's, everybody was healthy and happy and it, it, it didn't have to impact anybody's health. But other than that, I think the pollution level is going down and, and people doing better and, and more introspective about themselves, spending more family time, all of that is definitely good. Do you find, you know, with a lot of awareness towards sustainability, you know, environment protection, do you find businesses doesn't matter, you know, SME or a large scale business, taking initiative to move in that direction. Have you have you seen, have you witnessed a dynamic change in the thought process? Because you meet a lot of leaders, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I think so. I think a lot of good people at the top are talking about it. So definitely the United Nations SDG goals are there. I understand that uh, a lot of the conferences that the CEOs are going to are also talking about holding them accountable for their impact on the planet. Uh, the larger corporations are definitely uh, facing the brunt of it. The smaller, medium ones, not so much. Um, that said, you know, um, we need more people to stand up for the right things. And once people do, other people will get inspired by it. So that's our hope. The question that I have is, how do you face defeat, if, if ever? I mean, how, how have you dealt with you know, defeat or, you know, not winning at something or losing something at work? I uh, personally wouldn't say that I've faced it. I think um, there have been times, yeah, there have been times that I haven't done well, but that's not defeat, right? Yeah. So uh, I think defeat means that something has happened and you've internalized it uh, as something that you didn't do and, and blah, blah. I never do that, right? So... Uh, if something didn't go well, there's a learning in it. And I take that learning and I say, as long as I took the learning, I'm successful. Uh, after that, if, if a certain way didn't uh, work and something else would have been worked, fair enough, let's go tomorrow and try the other way around. So uh, um, I wouldn't say of that as defeats. There were times when I didn't hit the mark. Yes, but I've never been tough on, on myself for them. 
you know uh, somebody that i admire in the role of entrepreneurship taught me to learn to forgive yourself every night learning to forgive yourself where you thought you would be but you couldn't be and that is one art i think uh, has helped me a lot as an entrepreneur i mean somebody with unrealistic expectation of themselves it is very important to understand that certain things can be done and certain things cannot be done i think it has become a very important lesson in my smaller journey i think i would uh, add a little bit tweak it a little bit maybe if that's if that's okay is um i i don't think there's anything is unrealistic expectations if you have an expectation coming from yourself it is coming from some place good and uh, it knows something you don't know yet like consider it that way and uh, as long as it you give it time like the the issue is probably that you expect unrealistic expectations today uh, that might be a problem but to expect unrealistic stuff out of yourselves is a good thing um you know rather than assume it that gives you a push uh, right yeah it gives you a push and probably it's well justified uh, who's to say you can't do them uh, if somebody can go to mars you can do unrealistic stuff right that was pretty unrealistic till a point so um, not be hard on yourselves is one thing about it there's no such thing as unrealistic expectations uh, people at one point thought we couldn't fly and we did so maybe you will do something ab- about that just just let it go but just don't be too hard on when um and the other thing is uh, going to in the about going to sleep and uh you know understanding yourself yeah. i think in the whole day just ask yourself are you doing the right things uh, rather than assume at the end there's something didn't work uh, if you're aware of it if, even if every hour two hours is double check a quick check to say okay did i do the right thing is good enough rather than pile it up in the evening and that uh, blame yourselves for it you were an art of living teacher i did not know that yes how has art of living helped you in life oh uh, tremendously um i i like i said i have um, uh, mentors in that field and gurudev is one of them and uh, i feel uh, you know looking up to him with his ability to manage a volunteer driven organization which incorporates you pay people so much and they would still not do the kind of stuff that we would do for him uh in terms of uh, helping him achieve achieve the the kind of um purpose and impact that he wants to achieve and that's probably a good learning for me but that you not you can pay to get somebody's uh, mind but uh, you cannot pay to get somebody's heart heart is only a win one with love and um, there i think there's a lot of learning from him on on how to make that happen in fact a lot of the new age ceo is about how he has managed in 30 years to come up with an organization that has won the hearts of millions of people right uh, you, beyond a point you can't argue every a billion people cannot be dumb there is something amazing that he is bringing to everybody's competency that is helping them do better so yeah it definitely has helped me a lot about about that I I I think we are done with the questions. I think it was a great interactive session with you and Adi. Bas itne. Maine bahut kuch pooch liya na aapse aaj hum usko process karenge. Aapne kaha na jo juice nikala hai humne. But but uh, I think I'm I am lucky uh, you know it's always good to have a good session and somebody who wants something from you but it's it's only possible for somebody to take the juice out of the others if the other person is really hungry and uh, there's no big compliment than to know that you are a hungry leader uh, so we've gotten feedback saying it's it's it was a wonderful session we got a, a fresh perspective about leading life and running a business on conscious lines oh thank you so much um, that's a it's a privilege thanks yes um, over to you then anju to such a wonderful session we would have wanted it to carry on but anyways as time we have short time so i will request uh, ms ritika singh now to give vote of thanks thank you so much anjum garima fantastic and nidhi i don't even know where to start thanking you you were such a such a rock star with uh, such amazingly fresh perspectives my personal takeaway from you um uh Can you hear me? I'm sorry. I think I just got a call in between. Can you hear me? 
okay so i think my personal uh, take away from today's session was about the buckets that you've had uh, in your life and how you've had you know one particular person mentoring and taking care of that and i think i'm going to start following that nidhi and um, such a trailblazer you are such a people's person so easy to connect so easy to vibe with and i can understand how your team and everybody around would love you so much and um, uh, what humility you have in whatever that you're doing and uh, you know uh, a lot of takeaways like uh, garima rightly said about uh, ensuring that we uh, you know live consciously and um, all the best for your future on the world and we hope to keep you coming back on behalf of tai chandigarh's uh, president chandigarh chapter uh, mr edesh madan i thank you from the bottom of my heart from the entire team and uh, to garima also so thank you so much for leading this you've done a fantastic job and maybe we hope to have you back uh, during the tycon i guess uh, sometime in march we'll come back to you with the dates thank you so much once again thank you guys uh, it's a, it's a pleasure rithika and thanks again to tai i think you guys are doing fantastic and to have such amazing women lead it i can only expect the best coming out from you folks and uh, anything that i can help with please feel free to ask and tai we'll be reaching out thank you so much nidhi thank you everyone thank for joining you. us today Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.